My name is Peter Mercer. I'm the university's acting vice president external. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you here this afternoon and to thank you for joining us on what has to be one of the most historic and beautiful days in the life of the University of Western Ontario and the Western Business School. Many of you will know the roster of speakers who will be talking to you about the exciting developments at Western's Business School this afternoon, but allow me to introduce them to you formally. On my left and your right, the president of the university, Dr. Paul Davenport. Beside him, Lawrence Tapp, the dean of the Western Business School, who may be known to some of you. On the far right, on the other side, on your left, Liz Stevens, the president of the MBA Association at Western Business School. And beside her, Earl Orser, the chairman of the school's advisory committee. And the man in the middle, Richard M. Ivey, chairman of Ives Corpor Corporation, and a former chancellor of the University of Western Ontario. He's also a former chair of the Board of Governors and is an honorary member of the Western Business School Advisory Committee. It's wonderful to see so many members of the Ivy family here this afternoon, together with a retinue of distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and students. I know many of you have very strong personal and professional ties to the school and to the university, and I think you'll be especially pleased with the announcement that you hear this afternoon. I don't want to keep you in suspense any longer, so I'm going to call on Earl Orser, a businessman extraordinaire in this community, and indeed in Canada, chairman of the school's advisory committee, a past chair of the University Board of Governors, who has a few words to say to you. Earl? Thank you, Peter. Here he said, businessman extraordinaire. <laughs> well, I know that's not Latin, but uh, anyway, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in charge of the weather. Um, <laughs> well, I was in Toronto this morning when there was a meeting, uh, assembly concerning this, this uh, announcement. I know what it is. Wow! What a day for the business school and for Western. This is an exciting day in the history of Western Business School and the university. And I'll tell you, I'm proud to be part of it. This school has made a significant contribution to Canada's economic life by making sure that one of our critical resources, our managerial talent, is second to none. You're the people from the school. How do you do it? Well, I think you do it by possessing something that the business community values as much as excellence. And that is a sense of mission and a vision of how to achieve it. Western Business School's mission is to develop decisive business leaders who think strategically, act globally, and communicate effectively. This focus has helped Western become Canada's preeminent business school. And now, the school is poised to become a global leader. As chairman of the school's advisory committee, and having been chair of the university's board of governors, I know a bit about the problems of post-secondary institutions in Canada today. Faced with dwindling government funding, institutions like the Western Business School will have to look at new ways of financing themselves. Our schools have to build a resource base that is on par with what, of course, much better finance schools beyond our border. And I'll tell you that the Canadian business community is a strategic partner in accomplishing this goal. As a business person, I know companies have to maintain their competitive edge by upgrading their products and services. And the Western Business School is no different. You face the same winds of global competition. You know that being best in your home market just doesn't mean that much anymore. You know you have to compete and win on a global basis. Today's announcement was received with excitement and enthusiasm in Toronto this morning. It's a cause it really is a cause for celebration. The Western Business School can move ahead 
prosper and grow into one of the best schools of management anywhere in the world. Here to make the announcement is your leader, our new Dean of the Western Business School, Larry Tapp. Thank you, Earl, and good, good afternoon. As a businessman, I say let's get right down to business. I have the privilege of announcing today a $13.5 million gift by the Ivy family to the Western Business School and the University of Western Ontario. of the amount has been directly earmarked for the Western Business School. This donation is among the largest ever in the history of university giving in Canada. But it represents more than money. It represents a common vision and partnership between the country's top business school and one of Canada's most distinguished fam family of philanthropists, the Ivies. That vision is for the Western Business School to achieve international renown for developing outstanding business leaders. Recognizing our close ties with the Ivy family that span half a century, and in honor of their significant investment in Canadian business leadership and excellence, the Western Business School will be renamed the Richard Ivy School of Business on January 1, 1996. Paul Davenport, our president, will say more about our relationship with the Ivy family, but let me say that we at Western are very proud to be the standard bearers of a name that symbolizes enlightened investment in higher education in this country. I'm happy to say the Ivy family is well represented here this afternoon. We have with us Dick, Dick Ivy and his wife, Beryl Ivy, their son, Richard W. Ivy, a Western Business School graduate of 1972, and daughters, Jennifer Ivy Bannock, Rosamond Ivy Tom, a Western Business School graduate of 1982, and Suzanne Ivy Cook, Dick himself is a graduate of 1947. This historic naming gift is a great way to inaugurate what will be the most ambitious fundraising campaign ever by the Western Business School. This morning in Toronto, we were pleased to announce that Bruce Birmingham, President and Chief Operating Officer of the Bank of Nova Scotia, has agreed to chair this major campaign. With partners like Bruce, Scotia Bank, and the Ivy family, the school is well on its way to reaching the next stage of its evolution into a global leader. Let me spend a moment telling you why a school that has achieved widespread renown for academic excellence and one that has just received a major gift will soon seek additional funds. At a time when most major public and private institutions are focusing on cost control, it is certainly a legitimate question. As a businessman, I know that companies must constantly reinvest in their plant and equipment, processes, and intellectual capital in order to grow the business and remain competitive. Being the leader in your field offers no respite. In fact, it places added pressure on you to defend your position. The same holds true for universities at large, and for business schools in particular, which compete in a global market for the best faculty, the best students and executives, the best research grants, and so on. And so like business itself, business education is now a global enterprise. We have to be global. Our graduates are entering firms that compete internationally. And it is vital that the intellectual capital they have acquired be second to none. If we are going to sustain and build on a world-class business leadership development center here that will attract the brightest and the best we need the financial resources to get the job done. Now, I've been called a tough, no-nonsense kind of manager, so let me stay in character when I describe what we're up against. In our competitive environment, success breeds further success. And a school's funding base is a vital catalyst. In publications from Business Week to Asia Inc., from Canadian Business to the Economist Intelligence Unit, Western has been recognized prominently among the leading business schools worldwide despite the fact 
that our funding base is 40% of Stanford's. We've done well, but our competitors are not standing still. We are in danger of losing ground if we do not develop the financial resources to take on the Stanford's, Harvard's, and Wharton's, schools with whom we compete for the best faculty and students. The same, of course, holds true for many Canadian businesses. In an export-based economy, Canadian companies need an international perspective in order to survive and prosper. Our products and services must be able to compete and win against the world's best. A global orientation is, in fact, only one critical component of a successful economy. At Western, we are, we're also focused on the need to leverage technology for competitive advantage and on the need for business leaders, whether in large or rapidly growing organizations, to foster entrepreneurship and innovation. Business people, educators, governments, we all swim in the same ocean. The economic forces that shape us and that give us unparalleled opportunity are resulting in an educational revolution that stretches from kindergarten to graduate school. Our educational institutions must seek out and secure the resources needed to prepare graduates for a working world that is changing radically. For Western and for the future Ivy Business School, the challenge is clear. In the face of declining public funding, we must become more self-sufficient to sustain our standards of excellence and to manage change. We've already made good progress. Two-thirds of our revenues are self-generated. That's an impressive statistic in the Canadian university context, but it's not enough. This gift and this campaign will be an important step in this drive for self-sufficiency. What will $11 million do for the school? Over the next few months, I will be working with members of the Ivy family on the specific designation of this extraordinary gift. But we know there are several areas that are critical to our growth, areas where this gift will be used to help stimulate change and innovation. It will help us recruit faculty members who are the leading thinkers in their academic fields through the creation of chairs and professorships to stimulate their activities. It will pave the way for a major revamping of the MBA curriculum. It will be used to help fund new programs on today's most pressing management challenges, challenges like emerging markets, NAFTA and Asia-Pacific competition, entrepreneurship, innovation and growth, technology-based business, managing diversity, and so on. And it will leverage our fundraising efforts by setting an impressive standard for like-minded individuals who are also committed to excellence in business education. These are the platforms from which we will launch graduates into a business world that grows more global every day. As Canadian business leaders, the Ivies understand the challenges we face in the international arena. As business leaders, they have a bias towards action, towards defining problems and solving them. The family support to the University of Western Ontario reflects a simple truth that the best investment we can make in Canada's futures, future prosperity is through support to education. We are naturally honored to be chosen as the recipient of this historic gift, but as Canadians, we will all look back with particular satisfaction if this gift unleashes a tidal wave of support to our institutions of higher learning. The Ivies are demonstrating the kind of leadership we need to make that happen, to make sure that it is Canadian schools who nurture the next generation of Canadian business leaders. And I'll call upon Dick Ivey to say a few words. First of all, thank you, Larry, and, and thank all of you for that uh, wonderful uh, bit of applause. As Larry has uh, already uh, uh, brought out, uh, it was in 1947 that my wife, Beryl, and I graduated from Western. It was in that same year that our family foundation was incorporated, 
And uh, my father uh, uh, did me a, a tremendous favor, which has played an very, had a very important influence on my life ever since. First of all, he discussed thoroughly with me beforehand the idea of creating the foundation. And secondly, named me as one of the as one of the incorporators of the foundation and declared in the bylaws that he and I would be deemed co-founders of the foundation. By that act of involving me at the beginning, he greatly encouraged my interest in philanthropy. And together with my wife, Beryl, it has been a pursuit which we have thoroughly enjoyed throughout our marriage. In turn, we have tried to involve our family in the affairs of the foundation and have done so since their, their time of graduation from university. They've all shown a great interest in the affairs and we hope they will carry on their charitable activities long after Beryl and I are gone. The important thing to me about the gift that has been announced today is that each of our son Richard and our three daughters, Jennifer, Rosamond, and Suzanne, has participated in a major way in the gift, as has my wife, Beryl. I want to publicly acknowledge their generous support of the gift that is being made in the name of the Richard M. Ivey family and the Richard Ivey Foundation. Without their support, it just wouldn't have happened. As Larry has noted, all the members of the family are here today, and I hope you will have an opportunity to talk to them later. We're all lined up in the center here. <coughs> Our family's taken great pride in the accomplishments of the Western Business School since our association began with it 50 years ago. Its goal to be recognized as a business school of stature on the global scene is one we heartily endorse. During the past 50 years, International business has been a, an important contributor to our family's success. We are pleased to be able to share some of the fruits of that success with the coming generations of business students from whatever place or country they may call home. We are looking forward to working with Larry and his associates in refining the specific objectives of our donation. We also hope that others may be equally inspired to be generous to the forthcoming campaign for the business school that has been announced today. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate your work. Thank you very much, Dick. I'd now like to call upon Dr. Paul Davenport, the President of the University of Western Ontario. Well, what a wonderful day for Western, and, and what a pleasure it is for all of us here, students, faculty, and staff, to share in this celebration of the leadership and vision of the Ivy family. As Larry Tapp said, the I Ivy connection at Western runs deep. Three generations of this family have been staunch supporters of our university. Including this current gift, they have donated a total of $37,995,000 to the university and its affiliated colleges. Perhaps the most significant philanthropic relationship of a single family to a single institution in the history of our country. The Ivies are an integral part of Western's life. For more than 50 years, they have helped sustain the university, not only through their financial support, but through their leadership as well. It began with Richard G. Ivey, Dick's father, who served as the inaugural chairman of the Business Schools Advisory Committee way back in 1948. He also led this university as chancellor and was a member of its board of governors. Dick Ivey himself also served on the business school's advisory committee. He served as chancellor of the university, chair of the board of governors, and director of Foundation Western. Like Dick, Beryl Ivey is also a UWO graduate 
of 1947. She is a director of Foundation Western and a member of the Visual Arts Advisory Council. Richard, Dick and Beryl's son, is currently a member of the Advisory Committee and has served on our Board of Governors. Through the individual members of the family and through the Richard Ivey Foundation and the Richard and Jean Ivey Fund, the Ivey's commitments to the university provided funding for many of our flagship centers and programs. They led the drive for the creation of the Richard Ivey School of Business Administration building in 1957. They funded the Richard G. Ivey Computing Center in the Western Business School in 1978. And they helped create the J.J. Wetlaufer Executive Development Center in Mississauga in 1991. They have also created three chairs in our medical faculties, the Richard Ivey Center for Molecular Biology and other important initiatives at the University of Western Ontario. And of course, their sense of social responsibility does not end at the borders of the university. They are outstanding philanthropists in the city of London and throughout Ontario. It is the dedication of alumni like these and other business leaders in Canada and abroad that ensures the quality of education that is Western's hallmark and the leg legacy of the Richard Ivey School of Business. You heard Larry Tapp speak of the global competition we face. Western has one of the finest business schools in the world today, and we aim to keep it that way. Western's goal is to develop leaders, but leadership means never resting on your laurels. This new funding will allow the Ivy Business School to continue serving the rapidly evolving needs of our private and public sectors, and indeed to help managers anticipate where that evolution is headed. On behalf of the university, then, I want to thank the Ivies for their resounding vote of confidence in us and in Canada's future. The world's leading business schools did not reach their pinnacles by luck or by accident. It took the vision of philanthropists like the Ivies, who believe that the best way a society can guarantee future prosperity is through creating educational excellence in our schools. So to all in the Ivy family, to Dick, Beryl, Richard, Rosman, Suzanne, and Jennifer, who are with us today, on behalf of all of those students and all of those faculty who in future years will benefit from this extraordinary gift, we thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. Thanks very much, Paul. Let me say that as the Acting Vice President External, I also want to add my own thanks. I should tell you that I assumed that position on July the 1st, and I'd been in the job for four days when Adrian Ryans called me and told me of the Ivy family's proposal, and he added that through their proposal, I was about to become the most successful Vice President External <laughs> on a per diem basis in the history of the country. Um, I have to tell you, Mr. President, it's been downhill since then. <laughs> so I'm extremely pleased that we've announced this gift today because we're all hoping that it will kickstart the philanthropic impulse all over the country in favor of the University of Western Ontario. And I certainly add my own very warm thanks to the Ivy family today. Now, you will know that the Western Business School, or perhaps the Richard Ivey School of Business, to give it its new name, prides itself on the high caliber of its students. And I'd ask you to welcome one of the best and the brightest of those today, Liz Stevens, the president of the MBA Association. Liz? Thank you very much.
very much, Dr. Mercer. On behalf of all the students in the school, I'd very much like to say thank you to the Ivy family for their generous support. This is already an incredible school, and now it's going to get even better. As we move into the workforce, I know that as graduates, the first graduates of the Richard Ivey School of Business, we're going to be very proud of where we've come from and what the school is going to do in the future. Mr. Ivey, would you like to join me in the unveiling of the, the name? Sure. <laughs> 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 